Hi folks, Slixosis here. Um, today I've got a bit of knife history, but it's not a history of the Sheffield knife or anything, it's, it's my knife history. These are a couple of um, knives that I have owned since, it feels like since the beginning of time. They're not actually the first knives I ever had, but they're the earliest ones that I still have. I had a couple of um, sort of Swiss Army knife knockoffs, because back in the 70s when I was a child um, only rich people could afford real Swiss Army knives and um, instead we had to make do with what I presume were a sort of Chinese knockoff but they may not have been they may have they may have actually been made in the in the West somewhere but they uh, you could buy them in your mum's uh, catalogue um, and pay them up so it was you know it was a way that one could could get these sorts of things but um a couple of knives came along uh, and these two are the two earliest to say that i still have uh this first one which is a um a royal navy class knife my father was in the royal naval reserve and uh i was a sailor i i got my uh day boat um ticket when i was eight years old um and this knife uh, uh, dates from that period I think it was just for my ninth birthday I passed my Royal Yachting Association um, test thing and I think this was I think I got this for my ninth birthday um, but I bought it myself I bought it from the stores in HMS Claver House in Edinburgh and it's I say it's a, it's a fairly standard Royal Navy class knife. The, the ISCD is from 1938 right up until the 80s. I was later on in the Naval Reserve myself, but by that time they'd stopped issuing them. But I still carried this one whenever I was at sea. Uh, this isn't the original lanyard, although it's starting to look like the original lanyard because it's got mucky already. But um, uh, sailors have two of these really you have one that you wear with your dress uniform and it's always bright white and absolutely clean and the other one was the one that you would put on your clasp knife it has um two um what were those called turk's head knots and i assume that's reasonable you had a uh, a fixed one here and a running one on this end that you can slide up and down uh, i generally used to attach this to my uh, belt loop on my trousers on the basis that if this got caught in sweep gear and dragged overboard then uh, I wouldn't go with it a bit of my trousers might uh, but at the same time if I just dropped it on the deck uh, it wouldn't disappear out through a scupper and on into the briny blue and be lost um, I've done a video on this knife before so you, you, you maybe you've all seen it but as I say this was one of my very earliest um, knives made by Meissen um, in Sheffield but most of the Sheffield makers made these and so the pattern was very rigid from 1938 I think they started issuing this pattern now the, you see earlier ones but the earlier ones uh, very early ones had a sort of bone handle and then um, the various ones with some sort of uh, plastic or resin handles that were around you can normally tell the difference between army ones and navy ones though because navy ones are a single layer with a blade and a marlin spike and a screwdriver at the, at the bail end. Uh, army ones tend to be um, a two layer and have a blade and a can opener. Some have a marlin spike and some don't. But if it has a can opener it's probably army. Um, and also has a screwdriver at the other end of his army because being too laid, too layer, they use the central divider to form the screwdriver at this end. Because this doesn't have a central divider, it simply uses this um, sort of what you might call backspacer piece in order to form the screwdriver. Um, I like these better than the army ones, but that's probably because I just have this sort of nautical interest that goes back to um, my early childhood. Although, funnily enough, I stopped sailing when I was about uh, 10 or 11 and I've really done very little since other than, as I say, in uh, ships in the Naval Reserve. I was a sub-lieutenant in the Royal Naval Reserve. 
um, in the late 80s. Anyway, so I had that um, and I used that and carried it a lot. But the knife my father used to carry was this one. Now, um, he left us when I was 10 and um, my brother and I raided his briefcase and we found one or two interesting items in his briefcase. Uh, it was a Diana G80 air pistol, uh, which looks like a sort of 9-11 sort of rough shape, but it's a spring action air pistol that fires pellets and darts and uh, also had a kind of repeating action with ball bearings. You could put a number of 177 ball bearings four and a half millimeter ball bearings in the in the little over barrel chute and then you just had to keep cocking and fire and cock and fire and cock and fire um which was a, an interesting toy and it could also fire little darts which my little brother never enjoyed but there we are um but also in there there were two knives this was one and this was one my father used to carry um quite commonly when we were doing various sort of um you know bonfires and beaches and beach walks and things um used to make a bonfire and we'd do we'd cook sausages I mean, what we called a sausage sizzle but uh um i there were two nights there was this one and there was a stiletto my brother fancied the stiletto my elder brother so he had first dibs and he took that and i took this one and i've never regretted that i've always been very pleased with this now it didn't have a studded sheath it had a very rudimentary um, leather sheath with a um, snap fastening at the top to stop the knife falling out um, but most of the stitching was rotten and the knife is actually longer than the sheath but you can see that here it starts it right in the sheath so down here it um, had cut through all the stitching and it used to stick out the bottom now Yes, I probably could have re-stitched it and it probably needed some sort of welt or something to um, keep the blade off the stitching. But I didn't know how to do any of that and I was a teenager and I quite like rock music and all of that and the idea of studs, well, not, not when I was 10, but I was a little bit older. I liked the idea of the studs, so I bought all these studs from a shop called Brewers in, um, in Sandwich in Kent, which is where I lived. I bought all the studs and you bought them one of the, you know, like, um, there were, it was a price per stud, and I can't remember how much it was. So I worked out how many I could afford, and I bought the studs. And I made little holes, pushed the studs through, flattened the backs. Didn't make a particularly neat job of it. But um, I did that in about um, 1980, 81, something like that. And... Um, much as this knife could do with a new scabbard, I'd never get rid of this one because it's, it's just part of my history. Now, the knife itself. Now, considering I was 10 when I got this, some people might consider this slightly inappropriate for a, um, a child to own as a knife. Um, you know, even just in case you were worried it uh, might be in some way politically correct. It has the word sabre written on it. Um, but uh, I did. I got it when I was 10 years old. I've never stabbed anybody with it. I've never cut anybody with it other than myself. Um, I have kind... I did kind of use and abuse it. And it has got, in its time, very rusty. But... Uh, I sort of tidied it up. Now it's going to go back, it's going to go to um, Ashley Harrison at uh, Arthur Wright and Sons because he's offered to refurbish it for me because it does have a few problems. One, the main one is that this uh, pommel is loose. Um, so it rattles apart from anything else. But um, so it's been like that as long as I can remember. I can't remember when it first got loose, but I suspect that was because I used to throw it at things which obviously isn't clever, but it seemed to me as a teenager uh, a very good idea. Also, the guard is, is a bit bent, and I suspect that came from the same thing. As I say, it suffered a period of neglect. Um, it was always well patinaed from the moment I got it, but it was allowed to get very rusty, and uh, um, my son said it wasn't his fault, 
but it was kept in the sheath by my son for some time and it came back completely rusty and I had to uh, clean all the rust off as best as I could. Now, in terms of where it came from, it's made, or it's, its maker's mark is J.H. Thompson Sheffield, England. But in actual fact, um, most of the Sheffield makers made this pattern of knife. It's very common, a sort of clip, bowie, false edge. It's not sharp at the back there, it's just a false edge. With this uh, large fuller, which of course, well, we always used to call a blood groove and had all sorts of blood curdling ideas about why it was that shape. But actually it's just about lightening the, the weight of the blade. Um, you form a sort of eye girder shape, so you keep all the strength, particularly in this direction, back and forth, um, without uh, seriously weakening the blade. But you do uh, lighten it by removing quite a bit of material. So, as they most of the Sheffield makers made these knives, um, Arthur Wright themselves make this pattern, and I th have a feeling they don't put the Arthur Wright stamp on it, but uh, you know. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. We've got, um, it's a carbon steel blade, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't have gone so rusty. What carbon steel? Haven't a clue. Um, it's probably C70 or something, because that's what they seem to have used forever. Um, it's an alloy uh, pommel, which I say is loose, and a stacked leather handle, which, um, you know, it's been well used, well carried. And I really, actually, I'm very fond of this knife. If there's one one of my knives that I'd, you know, really want to hold on to more than any of the others, it could possibly be this one. Well, it's one of these two. It's, you know, they're, 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 these are my my history of knives. I've got all my uh, Taylor's Eyewitness knives and I suppose my Arthur Wright knives and things now, but this these have been with me, uh, you know, as long as I can remember. Every adventure I had as a as a youth, um, you know, from scout camps to CCF uh, outings to uh, sausage sizzles with my family to, um, I remember particularly one night, all night fishing on uh, Sandwich Bay um, when uh, my friend John had an anchor lamp and he lit that, but we found a... Um, what do you call it? A uh, pallet, uh, you know, wooden pallet lying on the beach. And I, I used this knife to chop that up into pieces to make uh, kindling and then some pieces to burn. And we had this fire that went all night and it was absolutely freezing. I think it was like sort of March, really, really cold night on the beach. But I sat in a survival bag while John did all the fishing. Uh, but I did make a, a, a nice fire with this knife. So it's been used for wedging and prying and all sorts. Um, I mean, I should say the, the blade is um, about eight inches in length. Um, it's a good thick, I don't know, whatever that is, quarter inch thick stock. It's a really solid knife. And I used to throw it a lot. Um, I used to be quite good at throwing it, actually. Um, both as a straight th throw by the handle and also a spinning throw holding it by the blade. Um, used to, and then I used to play this other game where you throw it in the air and catch it which um, was probably really dangerous, but it seemed like a good thing to do at the time. Um, it was always sort of semi-sharp, but on a camping trip that we did with the Scouts to um, uh, Luxembourg, uh, as a uh, one of my, I think it was one of the Venture Scouts at the time, and I think I was still in the Scouts. So, you know, the over 16s, he was an apprentice, joiner and he wanted to make a they were making a totem pole and he asked if he could borrow my knife so I lent him my knife but of course before he started he sharpened it and it came back to me razor sharp and it's the first it was the first time I'd ever actually seen a really sharp knife because most knives I just bought them and whatever they came as what they were and it may have got a bit of a um, sharpen on a um, whetstone for us that I had for a scythe but that was it but he sharpened this and made it really sharp. It's still sharp, but you know, I've sharpened it once or twice in the meantime, obviously. Um, but I have now had this knife for um, oh, about 40, 45 years, something like that. So, you know, 
it's been sharp muscle anyway so that's it this is probably not the most interesting video i've done in in, in my time but uh first some of you might find it uh, might find it interesting so if you do or if you want to see something different then please you know give it a thumbs up and if you want to see some more videos then please subscribe and remember to ring the bell to get notifications thank you bye